One of the last videos I did, I told you that Sean and I were talking back and forth about the Tesla coil with the ZVS driver. Well, I just wanted to showcase what he did with his and the ZVS driver driving his Tesla coils and what he's able to produce. So, let's get into it and take a look. Sean, you really did an amazing job with this. We have a standard ZVS driver. This model right here is one of the best to use on this because it doesn't have a lot of heat to it when you start running the circuit. You're going to see the capacitors that he switched out. Now, I'll go ahead and give you the information on those in a little bit. But just to see that he took out the original conventional capacitors and then he put in a different one. For those of you who have never done this before, all the little black parts in the center there are the capacitors. When you remove them all, your ZVS driver should look just like this. The reason for the change in the capacitors is you're looking to go from 470 nanofarads down to 75 nanofarads. Now, what's the deal there? You need something that's going to pulse at a faster rate. I currently do not have the link for these capacitors, so I do have capacitors that will also work. This is the one that I use in my ZVS Tesla coil. They do work, however, changing the capacitance anytime you do it, it's going to change how you resonate on your number two coil. I will leave a link for the ones that I buy in the description. And if Sean gets back to me and tells me which ones he buys, I'll put it down there and I'll specifically say they're from Sean. And you can be able to link to those and buy those as well. Once we have the capacitors all soldered in, our ZBS driver is ready to go. There's nothing more you need to do to it. It's ready to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the power source. Now, the ZBS Tesla coil is going to be a little different. You need to start up the Tesla coil at very low power. 12 volts works perfect for this. You can set it up in oscillation first, and then you can add power to it afterwards. However, you do not want to start off with a lot of power right away. For this reason, if you could put in some diodes, then you can have two different power sources. The reason the diodes are there is because any energy that goes in from one power source will feed back to the secondary power source. So diodes on both will be perfect for this in order to have two different power supplies. The next obvious question is going to be, do I need two power supplies? And the answer is no. You can use one. However, just start it at 12 volts and you can bring it up to 60 volts is where the operating parameters of this thing are. Can you go a little over it? Well, if you have it really in resonance, yes. If you don't, it's going to be a bad time for you. One thing to note on your power source, the positive wire will connect directly to your power source. The negative has to have a switch in it. That's the best way to start this thing up. Now, what switch do you need? Just get a 120 volt AC switch and use it. To try to find one that's in DC is just a pain. An AC switch here works just fine. It's just turning this thing on and off. This right here is your number one coil. It's got five full rotations on it. This one may be a little less. Anyway, this is about what you want here. Real simple. This is just quarter inch tubing that's bendable from the Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get it or any hardware store that you go into the plumbing section for. This is exactly what we're going to use. Easiest to find, easiest to use. For the best results, we want this thing to be one quarter of an inch off of the actual coil itself. So, what's the best way to do this? You take a piece of PVC pipe that's the size of the coil. You put on cardboard or something and just wrap it around a couple times until you can get to one quarter of an inch. Then, all you have to take is this tubing and bend it around it. Another question you may have, do you need a divider between your number one coil and your number two coil? The answer normally is yes. You don't want anything to spark over. As you can see, this right here has a spark in it and it took a pretty raw chunk. So, what's the best answer here? If you're just trying to get it in residence, the answer is not necessarily. As long as it stays where it's supposed to, you're good to go to test it. 
if you want to run it and put some real power through it, get the divider. Now, PVC is one of the best things out there to use. You can use any kind of acrylic that you want. Also, if you 3D print something, just make sure that your infill is thick enough and then use it. Anything to get you your distance correct, by all means, go for it. So far, everything has been relatively easy. It's a simple hookup. It's a simple wiring job. The number two coil is going to be the bane of your existence if you don't get it right. The coil that you saw in the first test is this blue coil right here. It has a frequency of 300 kilohertz. The best frequencies to use on this CVS driver circuit is anywhere between 275 kilohertz and 350 kilohertz. 300 is the best number that you can come up with to use on this circuit. With that being said, can you go a little outside the bounds? Can you go just a little bit lower? Yes, you can. This coil right here resonates at 270 kilohertz. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it does. Looks real promising, doesn't it? That right there is just a startup. Again, anywhere from 12 to 20 volts. We're good to go. That's what it looks like at startup. So let's give it a little more juice and see what it does. Let's go back just a little bit. I skipped over an area for a reason and I want to go back to it. It has to do with our number one coil. Where do you place the clip on the number one coil? Well, you have to be able to set up a probe next to it to your oscilloscope. Generally, I say about 12 inches away, set it up, you're good to go for testing. Now, let's get into it just a little bit more though. As you can see, we have our clip on our right side. We turn it on and our oscilloscope shows us the frequency. Now, it's still resonating. However, it's not as good as it could be. So, we're going to have to turn this back off. Then we're going to have to move the clip into a better position. Obviously, Sean knows where this position is, so he puts it right in the right place. So, let's look at our oscilloscope again as he turns it on. Much, much better signal. More breakout. As you can see, he found the resonance point. There's a couple different ways to find the resonance point on your number one coil. Most people just move it around until it gives them the best spark possible. That's okay, but it's not exactly accurate. Here's a method that's going to show you where your resonance point is. Jim here on this video does an excellent job of pointing it out. I will leave the link for his video in the description below. Here are the simple connections here. You're going to take your probe from the oscilloscope. You're going to connect it to the side of your number two coil. You're going to put a 20k ohm resistor in between that and your frequency generator. Now both negatives get connected to an earth ground connection. Now that all your connections are made, we're going to do two things. You're going to set it for 20 volts peak to peak. Then you're going to change where your actual dial is going to go. So you want to be in a 10,000 spot on the dial so that it moves quicker through the frequencies and you're able to find that point where it jumps quickly. Here's what it's going to look like. Again, I'm going to show you Sean's where it was before and where it is now. So here we are again. Let's take a look and we turn it on. Again, we have a resonance there, but it's not a good resonance. And all we had to do was scroll through our frequency generator to find another one. Again, Sean uses a different method, so he has his preset. So 
he knows what the frequency is, so he already has it put in. So he's now just looking for the point where it connects in. And you just move the little clip around until you get it right. So, what are you looking for when you get it right? You're looking for a voltage peak. Now, it looks high on there, the big distance in between it. What are you looking for? Just the highest one that you can find. That's all it takes. And then there you have your resonance frequency you need. Now, for some of you, buying the type of equipment you're seeing on here is just going to be out of your range. You're looking at $300 for an oscilloscope, and you're looking at another $100 for a frequency generator. So, do you need something that expensive? The answer is no. You're going to look for something that has at least 500 kilohertz on your oscilloscope. So, there's one here for $50 on Amazon. Buy it. Signal generator. As long as it goes up to that frequency right there, up to 500 kilohertz, you're good to go. It's really not that hard just buy the cheap ones as long as that's where you want to go. Now, you want to do some more investing, get into some higher values later on, you may have to upgrade. But, if you just want to get in the door and get your Tesla coil running, that's all you need. With all that done right, this is what your final result should look like. Now, it would be wrong of me if I just showed you the good stuff in the video and didn't show you the pains that I go through when I tried to set up this on my own. I wasn't like Sean. I didn't start off and understand Tesla coils, and it's really become something that's the bane of my existence. However, I plan to get it right. Let me show you the pitfalls in this and understand exactly what I did wrong. We're at 30 volts. Right now we do have light up, so probably shouldn't go over the top like that. We do have a circuit that's working. We're up right now at 40. For those of you who have built testicles before, you could probably tell me right now what's wrong. And It'd be the sound, wouldn't it? The humming sound that you're hearing. Why are you hearing it? Well, it's because I'm not in resonance with my Tesla coil. Well, it's on the bare edge of it, I guess, but it's not anywhere close to where it should be. So what's happened? You're getting feedback into your number one coil. It's just not resonating. Not the way it needs to. So you're going to get a hum sound that comes out of your number one coil. That should never be there. That is a big no-no in this building of this Tesla coil. I'm surprised I didn't have a worse result or blow something out because of this. But, that's one of the pitfalls you're going to run into when you start building things like this. We're probably in the wrong residence right there. And I'm starting to fire right now. Basically just some uh, tubing on there. doesn't like that. Alright, well first test. Do we have some lighting? Yeah, we do. Is it in resonance? No. So let's go to the second one. So what was the second giveaway that we're totally wrong? Well, the wire that we hooked in with the clip started on fire. Later on in the testing, you're going to find that it's going to start melting. That's a big hint that you're not oscillating properly. Test number two. And we just moved it up a little bit. Let's see if that helped. We got our light out. Go up to about 30. We have light up. Right now close to 40 and it looks worse. That's starting to look better. We are now at 42. Moved it up. We're at 46.
and we're still smoking on that wire so it's gonna have to last all right we're gonna change this down one on the next one and we're gonna see if it works even better all right we're in test three we are now only on the second coil right here that's connected we are at 40 Okay, and we got a lot more smoke. I'm gonna have to take care of that before I go probably go any further. Oh, how fun it is! Apparently, I'm just hard headed. The thing is smoking, it's not supposed to smoke, it's buzzing. It's telling me, Hey, genius, you are completely out of resonance, do not continue. Did I listen? No! Not in one bit did I listen! Now, what should I have done? Stopped immediately, go back to the original video that I found it on, and let's look at it again. They obviously did something that I didn't. What did I not do? I did not check my number two coil. I did not find the resonance frequency of that coil, and because I failed in that area, I failed in the whole process. Okay, here we go. Test number three. I basically changed my number one coil here. I got it closer. And I changed the wire. So, hopefully now it won't start on fire and take up all the heat. And maybe we can get something going here. Alright, we'll give it a try. We're at 55 and we're just that thing's burning red hot. Well that's not gonna work either. What's going on is this piece right here. It clips on and it's just getting red hot. And it's taking up all the heat and all the energy from it. So we may have to put in a second uh, second capacitor here. Yeah, that's it, genius. Just add another capacitor. No matter if you're completely out of resonance or close to it. Nope, let's just add another capacitor. Apparently, you're not learning your lesson well enough. If I could reach through my TV right now and tap my on the shoulder and tell this genius, hey, this is what's going on. It's time to change it because you're completely in the wrong. Set the resonance frequency to the number two coil. Then set your number one coil to that frequency. You must oscillate at a very low amount of power before you try to amp it up with more power. So, like I said, I didn't learn right away. I didn't, wasn't able to talk to my you know, past self and give them some advice because I'd have some good advice for them, but apparently I just didn't get it. All right, test four. Simply just put two of them in there this time. We'll see if we can't get that switching speed up a little bit. I'm just getting way too much heat, not enough uh, fast switching. So we'll see. Now 55 and we're dead in the water again. Oh, okay. Well, I need to get a much bigger wire, apparently. This is not working this way. All right, here we go with test number four. See if it gets any better. Got 40 volt. 
damage. We're at 55. It's better there. Not smoking now. I don't know if that's fixed for good or just a little bit. I think I need to uh, stop and look at it. And I don't think I have my resonance point correct in getting this uh, to hit it the right uh, frequency matchup. So, all right, we're going to have to do some other testing. You know, when you listen back to yourself and you see what you're doing and you hear yourself, you're lighting this thing up where it's burning, right? And you're telling yourself every time, hey, it's out of resonance. But then you continue to do the same thing over and over. And you continue to add the power to it. And you continue to see something burn. But you knew what it was the whole time. Guys, I must be dense to what I'm saying because in my mind I have it right. What I'm physically doing is completely wrong. I don't know what to say. Guys, this isn't supposed to be for comedy purposes. But you can see, it's absolutely hilarious watching this. A guy that knows exactly what you should do, but he doesn't do it. Okay, I'm going to take one last look at this, and I think it's time to buy some equipment to help me out with this. Alright, let's see exactly how far we get uh, with what we have. Fifty five there. Basically, it's kind of let's not lie about it right now. I'm doing a very horrible job at this. Things are on fire, that's normal for me, but uh, not exactly right. You know, if you want to build this, do yourself a favor do not do what I did. Check everything. Make sure everything's good. Buy the cheap little things at the Amazon to be able to check on an oscilloscope, to be able to put a frequency into it. Just just do yourself a favor. I don't care if it's 50 bucks total you spend on both. It is going to save you the biggest headache. Here I am in my genius move. Not only did I fail, let's just turn off the lights and let's find out if it looked any better. In looking back on the footage, I couldn't really see the light a lot, so I wanted to do it at night just so you can get a good idea of where I'm at, so I can get the proper help. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn it on and get this going. Okay, we'll let that charge for a few minutes. Go we'll come over here. Turn it on, you see the green light comes on. Use one of the bigger bulbs here. Um, that's not. I mean, it's working, but it's not working, working. It's not where I need it to be. I'm at like a third of the power, maybe a quarter of the power, maybe less. This thing should be arcing up like crazy and do other things, but it's doing nothing. In all seriousness, one of the things that I really did learn from all of this is this is one tough circuit. I completely obliterated this thing and still got it to light up. It wasn't in resonance, wasn't correct. As a matter of fact, I was probably 300 kilohertz off resonance. That's a lot. But... My Tesla coil actually made a light light up. Crazy, huh? I guess there's a lot more to understand in this. 
this circuit is pretty tough. No matter what I put it through, no matter how I mistreated it, it continued to function. So with all that said, what's the best way to set this whole thing up? On your number one coil, five full turns, it's only going to give you frequencies in the range of about 275 to 350 kilohertz. Now, 300 kilohertz is right in the center. It's the sweet spot. In every coil you wrap, that's the frequency you want to hit. It's the easiest to hit. Your number one coil will match up to that. When your number two coil resonates at 300 kilohertz, you can find that frequency in your number one coil. What happens if you go out of that range? In this circuit, you're not going to be able to reach that with your number one coil. Best advice, keep your frequency of your number two coil at 300 kilohertz. Second part of the advice, don't be like the old man. If you know it's out of frequency, stop what you're doing, get a coil in frequency, then resume your test. Do not continue to burn things up. The third bit of advice I would give you, if you do not know how to wrap a number two coil, simply order one, but order it at 300 kilohertz. That's it. It's as simple as that. Why go with anything that will make you pull your hair out? Just order it that way. Let me just say this one more time. Sean, you did an amazing job. You're definitely way ahead of me. wanted to make this easier and more accessible to everybody who wanted to build one of these. So, Sean has agreed to partner with me on a project. We're going to take a bunch of different wire sizes, all the way from 20 gauge to 34 gauge, and we're going to wrap number two coils. Our goal, put it in 300 kilohertz of resonance in each coil. Now, we're also going to change the diameter of the pipe, go anywhere from 2 inches to about 5.5 inches. Now, we're going to have a whole range of things, so we're going to set out a spreadsheet and we're going to test every single one of them. We're going to find out which one's better in a resonance mode and which one's better to put out arcs. The whole goal of this whole thing that we're going to do is to collaborate and get this right. Make it easy for everyone. That way you can just go out and order a coil and be done with it, have this circuit put together in a day, and enjoy a Tesla coil. I think we owe it to everybody to do this kind of thing. If you have the knowledge, share it and do it right. So I'm looking forward to the collaboration. You've all seen my failures. You've all seen Sean's successes. Well, let's put a little ingenuity behind that and let's get it done right. I am totally looking forward to this. And Sean, thank you very much for agreeing to do this with me. One final thing, guys, I will leave this link in the description. This is for Archangel, and he goes through the ZBS Tesla coil and shows you a bunch of different testing methods. Please watch that video if you want to tune this thing properly. It really is an in-depth look at how you do this. And thank you, Archangel, for showing everybody this video. I love the thing. Works out good. Everything that you show is awesome. So... Anyway, guys, I'll leave the link in the description for this one. And if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.